Hi, my name is Sebastian. I work at Codeline as a user experience designer. In my everyday work, I do my best to create the best and flawless experience for the users of complex network systems. So what is user experience? User experience is the main touch point of your company and the end users, the clients themselves. It is a part of the entire customer experience. And customer experience is anything and everything that has to do with the user getting in contact with your company. So it's sales representatives, it's customer support, and of course the product itself. A part of user experience is user interface design. Mm, I'll tell you more on this later. Let me describe the UX process. Mm, let's say in a nutshell. It comprises of five major phases. Uh, first of which is the strategy, is where we identify the problem and see the user's needs, try to find their actual needs. The second phase is the analysis phase. This is where the designer can propose a certain value that the product will offer to the end customers. Next comes the design phase. And this is where the designer actually sits down at the computer and proposes some designs for the client. This can be low fidelity at first, and then we can move over to high fidelity once the low fee are tested. This is then followed by the optimization. This is where we take those high fidelity prototypes, show them to the stakeholders, and correct any mistakes and any flaws that we might have gotten wrong. The last phase is testing. This is where the prototype has been corrected. It seems as a, as a good option. Uh, and we can take it to test with the actual users. And this is one of the most important phases. This last phase lets us catch a lot of mistakes and see if the users are happy with the product that we designed. This, of course, does not mean that the UX work but the UX process for that certain product is done because actually this work is never done. Uh, user needs are changing, the technology is changing, so there's a need of optimizing the product every single day so it meets the user's expectations. So why is network software so specific? Well, first of all, it's the vast complexity of flows and processes. There's also a huge amount of data that needs to be presented um, effectively and clearly for the user. Historically speaking, most complex software networking systems have been created without any user experience in, in mind. They were just created so they would work, so they would work well. And user experience was actually never a priority. There was either no time or no funds, or the lack of both of those things, uh, to actually think about usability of the product when it was launched. UX or UI. This is why the kickoff meeting is so crucial at the very beginning of the design process, because this is where you find out what you need, and most importantly, the designers find out what you need from it. It's our job to make sure you know the difference between the UX and UI work. Doing just a user interface makeover is very affordable, but it will not give you the best results. We always recommend a holistic UX approach based on user tests, and as you have seen, split in those five major phases. One of the first steps of the entire UX process could be competitor analysis. You are most likely going to have some competitors in the field of networking. So there is no need of reinventing the wheel. It is always a good idea to perform an audit of a competitor's product in order to find mistakes, correct those mistakes, and this way gain an advantage over your competition. One thing Mm, worth remembering is always to use the terminology that has been widely spread 
cross networking world unless of course your product is extremely innovative and it is the first time it appears on the market an absolutely crucial thing is the information architecture of your product it actually makes the entire product it's always good practice to inform the designers about the entire process even though it could be extremely complex but so as to have them design with a broader picture in mind so they know exactly the goals that needs to be achieved at the very end of the flow of the process itself a properly designed information architecture is going to flatten the learning curve of a product so new users can adapt to it much quicker it's going to make the interactions much faster and much more effective and most of all it's going to eliminate errors and user frustration when it comes to keeping the cost down designing with the ux best practices in mind only is going to give you the most value for money this is for the designers use the design laws and ux best practices to create the best possible user experience without maybe answering all of the user's needs but this is going to give you the most value for money as i have mentioned before there's a lot of data to be processed and a lot of data to be displayed uh, in the networking software the best place to display all this data is to design a dashboard this dashboard needs to be designed in a way that will immediately tell the user that there's something wrong with the system and where they can find the information what's going on network admins are going to look at graphs and see for deviation from the norm so it's important to have that data displayed in plain sight this is why when designing a dashboard it's important to keep everything above the line that means that all of the information is available without scrolling down it is always good practice to let users interact with the data that is displayed so things like zooming searching filtering and, and sorting are absolutely necessary when designing a dashboard once we're on the topic of personalization it is always always good practice to let users interact with data any kinds of data that is displayed in the system it is important to let the users customize the system so it even comes down to things like setting a column width in a certain view of the system also it's recommended to use automation in very complex systems and uh, by using templates for example one important feature that tends to be forgotten is auto population it really does make users job much easier if they either have an example of the data so it's pre-filled in uh, for them they don't really have to think about this because they can actually see the default value another way of letting the user complete the task is giving the user visual feedback uh, it has been researched that images and visual aids are going to be processed much much faster as much as 60,000 times faster than plain text so do not be afraid of using things like heat maps colors icons or switches designers tend to do this by designing style guides or design systems they allow designers within a team to work consistently they allow uh, the ui or the front-end developers to design a consistent product without further consultations because they can see all the elements all the colors all the sizes you can achieve consistency with the product by making sure all of the visual information is present in a clear way you can limit the number of inputs and always remember to present the same or similar data in a similar way when designing the product especially a complex product try to remember one thing remember that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication when designing keep the mere exposure effect in mind the idea behind this is to present data for the user in such a way that it is 
clearly visible and recognizable. Even though you might not have access to actual users, you always have to think about them. Remember, users came to your software with a goal in mind and they have a task they want to accomplish. So it is important not to distract. So when designing a complex flow or a wizard, try to limit pop-ups, limit notifications, unless of course they are extremely important because they are crucial to the working of the system. In simple words, do not disturb once the process is started. You might think that placing all of the options and the features within your product is beneficial. It is not. Most users are probably not going to use them. It also wastes development time because developers need the time, you need the resources to develop all of these options and the development needs to be tested. So it does take a lot of time, it does take a lot of money and this time and money is wasted when those options are not being used. It's a much better idea to research the subject and find out what options users actually will need when using the product and providing them with a set of those options. All of the advanced features that the users are highly unlikely to use and maybe just some groups of users that will use those features are better treated as an upsale, a, an upgrade in the form of software as a service. When designing a digital product, it is worth remembering that you have all of those brains on board all of those people you can consult at every single stage of the design process. It is a good idea to gather all of those brains and all of the knowledge in one room to have a mutual discussion. When done this way, everybody knows all of the features and everybody knows all of the limitations of the product. This actually helps the designers understand the product and work much more efficiently. It's only natural to see major gaps in your flows and processes within your software after it has been given to the users. As you might imagine, these might have a huge impact on usability of the entire product. This is where a redesign comes into play. Sometimes those redesigns need to be a huge overhaul of the product or a part of it. And the changes might be very drastic. But in order not to discourage the users, remember to have those drastic changes designed, but not to implement them all at once. Always use the product schemas that are already present within the product. Always keep the changes small and gradual, so as not to discourage loyal users. You might wonder if there is a good way of actually guiding the user through all of the changes that have happened within the flow once it has been redesigned. There is, and it's called contextual help. These are those pop-ups that appear and give the user information as to where and what exactly has changed within the flow. When it comes to the last phase of the UX design process, the testing phase, there is actually nothing that can replace a test with an end user because this is where you get the most valuable information. I can tell you this is highly unlikely to happen. So based on experience, I can tell you there's a way around this. As part of the development team, you are going to have some people that might have the same or similar knowledge as the end users. So you might, you might use them as testers of the product. So of course, best if they haven't ever used it before, if they haven't even seeing the mockups. It's also not that important to use a huge user base. Studies show that five users testing a prototype are highly likely to find 85% of the mistakes of the product. Provided that you use members of your team as actual users to test the product, you can, in an iterative process, find out most of the mistakes that have been made and eliminate them before it's too late, before the product is launched to the public. This also allows you to keep the costs down. In cases where user tests are impossible, even 
with using members of a team. Then remember, use UX best practices and principles, and you are going to create a product that is entirely usable and answers many, but not most, of the user's needs. Designing a flawless user experience is certainly not an easy feat. It's certainly prone to errors. But as you might imagine, experience in this field is key, and experience is what Coliline has to offer. So please contact us, we're here to provide all the assistance you will ever need. Thank you for listening.